Forget Elon Musk and Sam Altman, these are the real pioneers of AI, but you've never even heard their names. The field of artificial intelligence goes back nearly 100 years. The first breakthroughs happened back in the 1940s and 1950s, decades before most people even heard the word computer. But why did we forget about the pioneers of AI? Why is it that everyone knows ChatGPT and Midjourney, yet the people who made all of this possible are ignored? Your life is heavily controlled by AI. But do you know who began this revolution? These are the untold stories of the architects of artificial intelligence, starting with the most interesting ones and ending with the most important pioneers in the history of AI. The year is 1957 and a young computer scientist just got a crazy idea to create the world's first artificial neuron. While everyone was focused on the Cold War, Frank Rosenblatt began working on his wild project. He called it the Perceptron and he wanted to teach it the difference between men and women, something that people still struggle with today. He believed that over time, the network of neurons would learn the difference between the two genders. He's using it to explore the mysterious problem of how the brain learns. But despite all the hype, Frank's perceptron didn't really work. It wasn't his fault though, the computers at the time simply weren't good enough and there also wasn't a large enough dataset of images to use. In fact, it would take over 50 years before someone solved this issue. Teaching computers to see is very hard and before 2009 it was basically impossible. That's when Fei Fei Li created ImageNet, a massive database that solved this long-standing problem. Fei Fei Li is one of the only female pioneers in the field of AI, so you can think of her as the queen of AI. She solved this 50-year-old problem by making a large, well-organized database with millions of tagged images. Fei Fei Li also served as the chief scientist of AI and machine learning at Google Cloud in 2017 and 2018. She has more AI-related awards than Elon has kids. In 2020, Time magazine named her one of the 100 most influential people in the world. That's pretty crazy, considering most people never even heard of her. Teaching computers to see was a big challenge, but it wasn't as important as giving AI the ability to remember. Imagine if you gave ChatGPT a prompt and halfway through the response it would just forget what you told it to do. That would be pretty bad. Luckily, the AI community has Jürgen Schmidhuber. Jürgen is what you would call a German genius. He's famous for developing a special type of neural networks called LSTM. I know, the acronym sounds intimidating, but it just stands for a long, short-term memory. Before 1997, the AI field was facing a huge problem called the vanishing gradient problem. Basically, the more layers you have in a neural network, the less it remembers. Like if someone came to you and told you 100 different facts, you probably wouldn't remember the first fact. You're gonna solve this problem by adding gates in between the layers. These gates decide what information should be remembered and what should be thrown away. If you're new to the channel, my name is David Andre and I make interesting videos like this one. So if you want to learn more about AI, subscribe. Once we could make AI remember things, the next level was teaching it how to think. For decades, AI could only do very specific tasks with clear instructions. But once you gave it something complex, something like the Chinese game of Go, the AI would become lost. And that is expected. After all, Go is a board game with more possible moves than atoms in the universe. Most people thought that AI would never be able to solve this ancient game, but one man thought otherwise, Demis Hassabis. From a very young age, Demis was an ultra genius. When he was just 13, he reached a chess rating of 2300. That's like three times my rating. After easily graduating from Cambridge, Demis decided it was time to make some money. He started his own company, DeepMind, which was acquired by Google for over 600 million dollars. But his biggest accomplishment came in 2016, when Demis and his team created an AI that defeated the best Go player in the world. While using deep learning to master board games is cool, it's not as useful as generating new data. And if you can't use AI to create new data, you have to do everything manually. And let's be honest, ain't nobody got time for that. Luckily, in 2014, Ian Goodfellow came up with a brilliant idea. What if you take two different programs and make them compete against each other? The first program tries to make fake data look real and the second one tries to spot the fake data. Sounds simple enough, right? Well, not quite. Just look at the name of this concept. Ian's idea was absolutely revolutionary. 
It's used in countless ways, from AI images to healthcare. Ian is one of those guys that tech companies fight over. He worked at Google Brain, OpenAI and even Apple. When he was doing his PhD, Ian was lucky enough to be mentored by one of the legendary godfathers of AI, Joshua Bengio, but more on him later. First, let's look at the man who made AI knowledge available to millions. The man behind both Google Brain and Coursera. I'm of course talking about Andrew Ng. Before Andrew, the access to high-level AI knowledge was extremely limited. His solution was starting Coursera, a platform with affordable online classes. Coursera is obviously a massive hit, but it's only a small part of Andrew's impressive career. In 2011, he founded Google Brain, a project focused on deep learning. He figured out how to make Google's large computer networks faster and better. The solution was quite simple, GPUs. Andrew realized that graphics cards were much better for AI and deep learning than normal processors. Funnily enough, the first major breakthrough at Google Brain was because of cats. In 2012, Andrew and his team had the AI watch millions of YouTube videos. When the algorithm taught itself to recognize cats in videos, the AI community was in shock. The experiment proved that a neural network could learn completely by itself. But without deep learning, none of this would be possible. And without Joshua Bengio, deep learning wouldn't be a thing. Joshua played a key role in teaching computers how to learn things. He is one of the three godfathers of AI. In the year 2000, while most people feared the Y2K bug, Joshua Bengio dives deep into neural networks. Bengio is no ordinary academic, he is a pioneer, a man on a mission. He sets his sights on one goal, teaching neural networks to learn. Skepticism surrounds him from all sides, friends, family and the scientific community, but Bengio is unfazed. He works tirelessly to make machines learn like a child absorbing language. It sounds simple, but it's absolutely revolutionary. Bengio's work starts getting attention. Soon enough, companies from Silicon Valley see the gold mine Bengio has uncovered. The impact of his AI discoveries is everywhere, from your last Google search to self-driving cars. A man who was once ridiculed and Shant has turned into a living legend in the AI field. But Joshua Bengio wasn't alone in his fascination with deep learning. His friend Jan LeCun, the second godfather of AI, was about to make history. In 1988, the world was just learning about the internet, but Jan LeCun was already in the future. He's captivated by something the average Joe can't even grasp, image recognition. LeCun believes that it is possible to make computers see things. He creates what we now know as the Convolutional Neural Network, or CNN in short. Suddenly, after decades of trial and error, computers gain the ability to see. These networks can identify shapes, objects and even real-world items. Medical scans become more accurate, robots can pick things up. The impact of this discovery is virtually limitless. While Jan LeCun is one of the greatest AI pioneers in history, he's overshadowed by Jeffrey Hinton, the third and final godfather of AI. In the 1980s, Jeffrey Hinton was the black sheep of computer science world. While everyone else dismissed artificial intelligence as a pipe dream, Hinton knew he was right. He took a page out of Frank Rosenblatt's book, insisting that the human brain was basically a complex neural network. It seemed to me there's no other way the brain could work. If you want to make a device do something intelligent, you've got two options. You can program it or it can learn. Hinton said that with enough layers, you can create an AI that can learn anything. But two major roadblocks stood in his way. Lack of data and computing power. Ever heard of the AI winter? It's not a new Game of Thrones season, but a period when funding and interest in AI hits an all-time low. Hinton was laughed at, dismissed as a fool chasing a unicorn. But he didn't care. He knew he was onto something big. Fast forward to 2006 and the world finally started to catch up. Thanks to Moore's law and a little invention called the internet, the data and power were no longer an issue. Jeffrey Hinton, after 30 years of ridicule, is now considered one of the greats in the field of AI. But decades before Hinton, there was Marvin Minsky. Imagine the Beatles of AI, well, Minsky would be John Lennon. He co-founded MIT's AI lab in 1959, a game-changing move that made MIT 
the mecca of AI research. Way before deep learning became a buzzword, he was already tinkering with neural networks, creating the first one called Snark in 1951. His big dream was to build a machine that could think and learn like a human. An idea as ambitious as trying to put a man on the moon. Minsky wasn't just a fetus though, he was an inventor too. He developed early machine vision tech and even patented the first head-mounted graphical display, a primitive VR headset. While Minsky's impact on AI is nothing short of extraordinary, he can't compete with John McCarthy, the guy who gave artificial intelligence its name. Before McCarthy, the term AI simply didn't exist. But he didn't just slap a label on it, he also laid its foundations by inventing the Lisp program programming language, a language so influential it's like the Latin of the coding world. At Stanford University, he went on to create the Stanford AI Lab. He also dabbled in AI philosophy and ethics, wondering if machines could ever gain consciousness. In 1971, he won the Turing Award, the tech world's equivalent of a Nobel Prize. There aren't many things more impressive than winning the Turing Award, which is named after the greatest AI pioneer in history. Alan Turing was literally a hundred years ahead of his time. Back in 1936, he came up with the Turing machine, a revolutionary idea that set the stage for all modern computing. Imagine a world where each machine could only do one specific task. Well, Turing obliterated that notion, proposing a universal machine capable of mimicking any other machine. This is the backbone of today's computers and AI. During World War II, Turing's knack for algorithms helped crack Germany's Enigma code. It is estimated that Turing saved over 21 million lives by shortening the war. In 1950, he wrote a paper outlining the Turing test. The goal was simple but profound. If you can't tell whether you're chatting with a machine or a human, then that machine is intelligent. However, society has a habit of treating geniuses like shit. It happened with Tesla and it also happened with Turing. But his contributions are unmatched, making him the single most important man in the history of artificial intelligence. Subscribe to learn more about AI.